today we discuss the eighth installment in the Conjuring Cinematic Universe, The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It. I'm Chad. And I'm Matt. This is episode nine of our podcast. We used to talk about this at work. So we are nine episodes in. Can you believe that, Matt? I'm surprised, actually. I figured by now we would have been canceled or something, but I appreciate it. I want to assume we're only not canceled because you did a hell of a job editing out that other stuff we were talking about. I mean, that and also our audience isn't big enough to care about the racist stuff that we said previously so you know right because if kevin's listening kevin don't care how we talk (laughs) (laughs) oh it's kevin i don't know that was his first day that popped in my head but no so we are nine episodes in and two-thirds of the show have been all guests and it's been a journey like it's been really nice to reconnect with old friends and you know, I, I look forward to what happens down the road from here, you know? Yes, I like more guests, more people that we used to work with, even people we haven't worked with. I think this is from our original vision of the podcast. I think it has evolved into something a little more besides mm-hmm. us just getting the regular topics off our chest to um, reconnecting with our old co-workers to now just getting new voices sorry, and ideas. Yeah, new ideas. Uh, from different people and just uh, basically good content, good topics, good talks, good conversations. Um, even if we agree or not, I'm just looking for good conversations with different people and if we work with them or not. I am working on getting guests that neither one of us have connections to. So that was something that, you know, the listeners can look forward to. I can't say when, because I don't know. So it could be within the next nine episodes. It may not be until like episode 35. I don't know. But we will have guests that we're just meeting. Right. And if you guys let's have other podcasts that you listen to, other YouTubers that you think that we should uh, have on the podcast or vice versa, we should be on their show. Leave a comment or review on wherever you listen to this at and, and let us know. Right. And like, well, be, we are friendly people. We'll, we'll stretch out that trivial olive branch. Right. And, and be realistic. Obviously, don't be like, oh, man, you should have PewDiePie on your show or whoever's cool. Or like, no, nah, you should be on the Joe Rogan podcast. And right. I'm like, I'm, I should have thought of that. <laughs> be realistic, people. Right. So what's been up with you? Man, I'm, I was thinking about being a real estate mogul in Japan. I don't know if you heard about this, but right now in Japan, they are offering houses for the low. Abandoned houses, they're offering it as low as 455 US dollars. What? Like to own or to, or is that per to month? To own. Or? Yes, because basically it's like run down towns and that the Japanese government is offering people to purchase these houses for the low. Okay. So how do taxes work there? Like, are there property taxes like here? Like, how does that work in Japan? I do not know. All I know is that I cannot do this. It has to be in the wife's name because it's only for Japanese citizens. Okay. So I I showed the wife this and it's about two hours and a half plane ride from where we're at to where these houses are at. Wait, what? How long of a drive? I didn't look up drive. I looked up train. It's a nine hour uh, train ride. So it's like a 15 hour drive. <laughs> right. And now the, the cities or Nagano and Tochigo. And that, that's where it's at. I told the wife, $455. You know, we buy two of those, you know, start renovating them and rent those places out. We might have our own little uh, mogul going on here. We might get this little real estate thing going. So my question with this plan is who will be doing these repairs is this going to be you and her like are you going to like hire people like what no it has has to be hire people i don't do construction especially it's different with the japanese houses because they're different than u.s houses there's no central air heating and everything else like that so we will have to contract out do you feel like that would eat up into your money that you're trying to well i have to do some more research on it to see what is that neighborhood like is this is this just going to be you know, whole, whole bunch of rundown houses. What's the projection going to be for the, like, is this, is the area that's around it? Is it, is it popping? I have to do more research on it. Cause if it's a good neighborhood or surrounding areas where this could develop into something bigger, 
mm-hmm. then maybe it should be something that we should look into, even if it's just one house. Come like five hundred dollars, all right? Because if worst comes to worst, we can always be like, all right, chalk it up as a loss if even if we don't do it. I just got to dive deeper into it to see if there's something a bridge that we want to cross. But okay. hey. It's a great opportunity because I don't want to be like, damn, I should have bought that house for five hundred dollars that neighborhood, and the house just later on starts selling for two hundred thousand. I'm like, man, why didn't I do that? I got you. All right. Well, I mean, good luck to you. Um, I can't think of any real estate moguls except Donald Trump, and I was gonna say, be a blank, not a Donald Trump, but I can't think of a good one. So I'm just gonna be the first me then, my first Matt real estate mogul then. I'm gonna be the one doing. You see, uh, you see, you see on, on uh, Instagram where people talk about, uh, you should do the real estate people, and they showing like in the states. Nah, don't listen to them. Listen to Matt. Matt's a worldwide real estate mogul. All right, I can help you out. <laughs> all right, and then they do research into you and be like, so none of the his properties are in his name for tax purposes. <laughs> see, you got to be thinking. See, this that's lesson number one. See, you on there, Chad? See, you paid attention. I mean, I, I bought into the program, so you know exactly already. See, and I ain't even got no property yet. <laughs> <laughs> also, the thing I wanted to, to address with you: graduation antics. So, let's before I give you any details. When you graduated high school, was there any extra antics, or did you that besides that you did, or any of your classmates do, as far like, as getting a diploma? You mean like pranks? Like what do you mean? No, like when you walked across the stage, like I like did a dance as you were getting the diploma. I don't follow or any, anything like that. Yes, I didn't like I'm sure people did. I mean, I don't think anybody did like a flip, but I'm pretty sure somebody did like a little a little, you know, what, what's this like when you what, what's that shit? And, um, as the listeners can't see with Chad, no, well, I was I saying that to, to you. I was right, right. I, no, I'm gonna describe it to the listeners. He was, uh, I don't know, uh, I was slinking, he was he was he was moving like an octopus. I don't know how to describe it. <laughs> no, no, I was gonna cut that. You was gonna say what it was called, then I was gonna say it, and I was gonna keep talking. <laughs> nah, well, the reason why I bring this up is because there was a North Carolina student, he wore he brought up uh, a Mexican flag. Was he Mexican? Yes, okay. And to get and he didn't get his diploma, like they wouldn't hand it to him. First, they said he was because it was a distraction. And later on, they said that it violated the dress code. A flag violates the dress code? Yeah, because it's not the regular cap and gown or whatever they have oh, him wear. Oh, he was wearing the flag? No, he had it. He had a cap and gown on, but then he wore the flag like around him. Oh, like a cape. Something like that. Yeah. I, I don't get schools when they're like being this strict. And it's like in this situation, I'm like, that doesn't seem like a big deal. I remember a few years back, there was a situation where a school wouldn't give a kid his diploma because he was 18 and he enlisted in the military. And so he's, he wore his military uniform to graduation. And they were like, you're supposed to wear the cap and gown. And for in that situation, I was like, I hear your school, like just wear the cap and gown. But I'm seeing like my personal hypocrisy in this situation where I'm like, he was just wearing a flag. Just give him, <laughs> just give him a diploma. See, and that's where I'm, I'm like, my first this is just give him the, just give him the diploma. But then I'm like, the other part of me is, why are you wearing a flag there? Like, I know you want to represent uh, where you're from. Mm-hmm. He's a first, um, He's the first person from his family to graduate. But I'm like, what? Like, then you get other videos of like people doing backflips uh, back when, you know, people was dunking on people. Mm. I'm like, what are you just take the fucking the diploma and go? Why are you doing all this extra stuff? Like to me, I always think I know in the easiest part to be is to say, just give them the diploma. It's done. Go from there. But in another sense is you've already accomplished your goal. You graduated high school. You was the first one to do it in your family. Why did you bring that flag in? He was excited about it. Like, I did this. I did this for me. I did this for my family. I did this for my relatives in Mexico who couldn't be here. Like, I'm excited. I'm, 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 I'm rocking this, you know? The piggyback off what you said about the uniform thing. Why are you wearing your uniform? The dress code was... Cap and gown. If right after high school, I worked at Toys R Us, am I going to wear my Toys R Us uniform to graduation? You got that pride, man. But that's, but that goes to the point where it's like, I don't get it to where maybe, maybe, maybe because, you know, my family, 
brother, sister, graduated college, parents, and everything like that. So it was, it it was never, a, of, uh, it's yeah. not a big deal to me. So like when I see the video of the kids uh, dunking on, like they have a little fake goal or whatever, do a, a, a backflip. I was thinking why, to me, that's just like, goes to one of my biggest pet peeves of Facebook is when people be like, pray for such and such with no details. When you don't tell people what it is, to me, you're doing solely for attention because you want people to be like, look at me. Oh, so sorry. What's going on? Blah, blah, blah. To where if you would just be like, hey, pray for my son. Um, he's having surgery. Okay. You, when you leave it open-ended like that, you're looking solely for attention. So when these graduates, they do all this extra shit, all you're doing is saying, look at me. You already on stage. We already looking at you. You don't have to do nothing extra. I don't disagree with you, Matt. Well, the Facebook analogy. I don't agree, disagree with you about the Facebook analogy. I'm looking for a meme. I send too many memes in my personal life. Where I'm not sure if I sent it to you where it was a meme basically describing what you were saying. Like, or the first post is like, I'm just so distraught. Don't ask questions. Right. I need y'all to pray for me. Don't yeah. ask questions. I, uh, I, that one, when they say don't ask questions, I hate that one. Because why are you posting then if you don't want people to say what's going on? I'm trying to like kind of put this in a way that is relatable because I get the want to kind of stand out and just put your own personal stamp on a personal achievement but don't they already do that when they they can decorate the top of their cap or is that just for college um i mean i'm sure high schoolers do it but nobody's looking at that they are literally saying your name individually you need more attention than that do you really remember that those people that aren't your relatives do you remember your high school graduation bits and pieces of it um right so I don't really remember much of my graduation, but I do remember when my mom graduated college, you know, she graduated later and mm-hmm. there were, was a family there with like drums. And like when that person came on, they were playing like, you know, drums and just made a whole big spectacle of it in the crowd. And that was memorable. That, that right there would irk me if I was there. I know. Cause I, I just, I don't like people dooming stuff solely for attention i don't disagree with you i genuinely do see where they're coming from but i don't disagree it it, it, it might seem like i'm leaning to one side or the other but it's just i have more and, it, and it, it's probably it's probably because i spent most of my adulthood in the military where it's all about uniform ability and uniform and stuff like that regulations to where when somebody says hey this is the uniform of the day and you do some extra stuff, then I'm like, okay, that's not what they said. They didn't say do your uniform or with some extra stuff. This is a uniform, do it, be done and move from there. Right. So Matt, a couple of weeks ago, I watched the first episode of Mary Easttown and I was like, this is pretty good. We're going to see where this goes, right? Mm-hmm. Samantha and I just finished the series, uh, seven episodes. It is excellent. It's got some twists and turns that you're not going to see coming. I highly recommend this show. We're not in the movie review section, so I'm not spoiling this. I'm telling you to watch this, Matt. And listeners, if you haven't seen this show yet, watch it. The Mayor of Easttown, Kate Winslet. What is it on? It's on HBO in America. I can't speak for any other country. All right. I have to check it out then. I don't see any way in which Kate Winslet will not get an Emmy for that. Hmm. you speak very high with it all right then i'll find my ways to find it there check it out <laughs> uh also i would i tried to do something to make you proud i tried to watch some anime yesterday ah, it, shit. It, well, which it, one was you trying to watch so you know that netflix has a two part of that new sailor moon movie i did not know this i've seen bits and pieces of sailor moon back in the day i'm gonna watch this and i and i turned it on and i got like about four or five minutes in and i'm like why why are you referencing things that i don't understand like uh, one of the characters wakes up and she's like all right today i go back to the 31st century and i'm like what are you talking about who are you what is happening here i I knew this wasn't going to be like a sailor moon origin story but i thought this would be a little kinder to like people to just like oh sailor moon i know what that is like 
You from the future? What are we doing here? They they <laughs> you, they didn't prepare. They was like, we jumping right on you in. Pray. You should have known about us. <laughs> you weren't reading the manga? What's wrong with right. you? <laughs> so I, I, manga. I, I, that's fair. <laughs> I don't know the animes. I just want it on the record. I tried. Hey, that's the first step. <laughs> if you want to know a good one, a simple one where you don't need any backstory, it's easy to get into. It's only like five or six episodes and it's on Netflix and it's about a former Yakuza person who's now a house husband. Oh, a goal we all aspire to. And it's called The Way of the Husband. Okay. And it's 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 funny. Like, even if you don't understand, like, like I watched it, I thought it was funny. So I suggested it to my wife. She got more enjoyment out of it than me just watching it without having that background. Because she's from Japan and she understands right. like the little nuances and like yes. the, the, okay but yeah um but yeah it's a good show uh you should check it out it's, it's real easy you you will understand when you're watching it if you have no background of how he is but it will it will just make more sense yeah let's hit this movie discussion this week we discuss the conjuring the devil made me do it i think i hurt someone the court accepts the existence of god every time a witness swears to tell the truth I think it's about time they accept the existence of the devil. Whatever is going on, whatever happened that day, that was not Arnie. A chilling story of terror, murder, and unknown evil that shocked even experienced real-life paranormal investigators Ed and Lorraine Warren. One of the most sensational cases from the files, it starts with a fight for the soul of a young boy then takes them beyond anything they've ever seen before to mark the first time in U.S. history that a murder suspect would claim demonic possession as a defense. So, Matt, when we were discussing what we were going to review this week, I brought up The Conjuring 3 because it was new. It just dropped on HBO Max and whatnot. And you told me that you hadn't seen the other two Conjuring movies. Have you seen anything from the universe? Like, have you seen the Annabelle movies or um, The Nun or The Curse of La Llorona? Okay. I haven't seen none of those. And I don't get to watch horror movies or anything like that frequently because nobody in my house likes to watch those movies. So if I do, then I have to do it on my own. Okay. So no, I have not watched any of those movies. Okay. So as I said at the top of the show, this is the eighth movie in the Conjuring universe. So there's three Conjuring movies, three Annabelle movies, and Annabelle is like a possessed doll. I'm not sure if you're familiar. Mm -hmm. Uh, So uh, that makes six. Then there's a nun movie. And then there's the Curse of La La Rona. Have you watched all of those? I've seen every single movie in the Conjuring universe except the first Annabelle movie. So when you watched it, did you know that all of this stuff was connected? Yeah. So like you watching this will make sense from all the other movies. They only reference like that. I noticed there were like two references to the greater universe. Like they mentioned Annabelle and then a priest that they talked to. He was in like two other movies. But beyond that, I feel like this movie, whether you liked it or not, I felt like it was friendly to people that weren't familiar with the universe okay do you feel the same way as someone that is not familiar with this universe yes it was uh as some as i watched it i completely understood how it was i mean it it all made it made sense to me i should say okay all right why don't you say your your phrase for this section of the show and then i'm gonna do a quick rundown of the movie all righty so we on episode nine y'all don't act brand new. We do this every episode. We're going to explain everything. We're going we gonna to talk about the end before we talk about the beginning. That's how we get down on this podcast. Y'all know this. That's why y'all love us, all uh, 34 of y'all. We dive in ahead first. You saw the description where you downloaded it. So let's get going. The movie opens with the Warren couple. They are in a family's home and the little boy is possessed. And the priest gets there and they're trying to excise the demon from him. And he knocks everybody out, like the little demon boy. The the little boy that's possessed, he has a sister and she has a boyfriend and he's there. And he's like, take me instead. Leave this boy alone. Take me. 
So the demon leaves the boy's the little boy's body and gets in the boyfriend's body. And everybody thinks everything is cool. The demon was excised. A few days later, the demon is at the body of the boyfriend. He murders his landlord and the police arrive and he's arrested. And his defense is that, you know, I was possessed by a demon or as the title of the movie goes, the devil made me do it. So the movie is essentially the Warren couple. They realized that this wasn't just a random possession as they have come across in other movies someone specifically Wait, stop right there um so the couple is in other movies yeah so are they in all the movies no they're just in the conjuring movies those are those are the main movies of the universe think of those <laughs> i was gonna say think of those as the avengers but that's not really accurate but they're like the the this whole universe started with the conjuring one and then it kind of splintered from there so they're in the three Conjuring movies and then they're in the third Annabelle movie, which takes place in their house because they have in their house, they have a room of, you know, how Batman has like different trinkets from bad guys he's beaten in the Batcave. They got something like that in their house, but it's all these items that are like cursed and possessed and stuff. So, you know, oh. the safest place for that is inside a residential home, you know. <laughs> right. So they're in the third Annabelle movie where it they when they bring Annabelle home, like once they do whatever they need to do to get the doll, they bring it home and then some stuff happens with their daughter. Okay. So the Warrens investigate the 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 situation and they see somebody is putting out these little items that if you're I'm assuming if you're close to them a demon will just be forced into you and you'll go on a killing spree. And so it's basically a race against time to try and stop this person from doing this to random people. And obviously they win. That's, that's enough of a, of a synopsis. I feel like, mm -hmm. what did you think of this movie, Matt? I thought it was hot garbage, hot garbage. I'm like, why did you, like when I started watching, I'm like, cool, a nice, scary movie for me to watch. I closed the curtains. I, I turned the sound system up nice. I want to hear all the stuff. And I'm watching it. And I'm like, the whole possession exorcism thing at the beginning, I was like, where? I'm, I just didn't get it. Like, I get it, like how I, exorcism works. But I'm like, this is not entertaining at all. Because a lot of shit, I'm like, why'd you do it like that? Why'd you do it like this? I just thought it was trash. Like this whole movie was like, I was getting disappointed. And I'm like, man, if, if, if I would have watched this on my own, I would have stopped it. But I'm like, I'm doing it for the podcast. So I was like, let me keep going. Now, I didn't know she, once the wife, Lorraine, showed her powers, to me, that's when it picked up. At the police station, when she picked the knife and all of that stuff, when she did her powers, that's when it picked up for me. To me, it was boring up until there. But once that happened, it picked up and it was intriguing to me towards the till the very end to where, all right, now you can correct me because then I got confused towards the end. So when they're at the end and they understand they're all at the, they got to destroy the altar to release the demon and all that stuff. The woman who did it, the old father's daughter, she don't have, does she have powers or is it just a demon who has, who's between them two? Which one had powers? What do you mean them two? Because, uh, you know, the father's, retired father's daughter is the one who's behind all this. Though that phrasing of words sounds super confusing. The retired priest has okay. a daughter. Well, they call him father. So the retired priest's daughter is the one behind all of this. Yes. Does she have powers? They kind of set it up when he was talking about how his big thing for the church is he investigated this cult that was doing like satanic rituals. You're so, right. yes, she does have powers because she gave her soul up to Satan or whomever. So, OK, because that's the part where it confused me to where during that whole fight scene where uh, Ed comes down there and. She does, blows the stuff. She does yeah, does. So I was stuff. like, was that the daughter or was that the demon dressed as the daughter? I got confused. Just like in the morgue scene, she, she, uh, Lorraine saw the daughter, but it 
I got confused as to what were they, what was her abilities? So I didn't know if it was actual daughter or was it some kind the demon as the daughter? I got confused. I believe it was the daughter that made that dead body rise in the morning. Mm-hmm. Because like she was like, How are you doing this? And she's like, I have the power of God. And that you right. Know, and then she it, realized she's like, Oh, it's open on both ends. Right. And so if she had the ability, if Lorraine had the ability to astro project to wherever the bad lady was, the bad lady had the ability to send some of her powers on the other side too. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And yeah, I just, I just couldn't get into it. Um, maybe because I haven't seen, I'm trying to give it the bit of a doubt, but I'm just, yeah, up until then, because a lot of stuff didn't make sense to me. <laughs> oh, but one thing I'm thinking about is how come we don't have water beds no more? <laughs> <laughs> I thought about that too, but I was also like, man, if that thing sprang a leak, it's over for you. Right. <laughs> <laughs> That's the first thing I thought about. I was like, oh, yeah, I remember when my parents used to have water beds. How come we don't have water beds no more? <laughs> also, do you want to sleep on that? Like, it's one thing to sleep on a boat, but like you're actually sleeping on the water. <laughs> See, and that's what that's what I thought about. I'm like, I thought it was cool, like when my parents had one, when I lay on it and play on it. But I've never slept on one to be like, you know what? I want a water bed. Hey, all our water bed listeners, let us know if you got one and how's that sleep. I feel like it's good for people with issues with their back, mm-hmm. but. Yeah, I don't think I would want to sleep on a waterbed. That would just feel too weird. Like it's not still. It's it's moving. Like I don't right, want to move the whole time. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want anything moving while I'm trying to sleep. Get right. out of here with that. Also, the little boy who was possessed at the beginning. Part of me thought I know it was for that time and everything, but I'm like his glasses was kind of fire though. I kind of yes, liked his they glasses. Were. Yes, <laughs> yeah, they were. I was like, oh, his glasses. He rocking those glasses. I'm like, like, maybe I didn't get me some. <laughs> why you reminding me? It's the '80s, man. That's right. a good look, son. <laughs> Oh, and then um, also when they said it was based on a true story, after the fact, I looked this up, it's based on a true story, but none of that extra shit happened. <laughs> so like, I was like, oh, because when I was, when I was thinking it, you know, when the boy was possessed in the jail mm-hmm. and he started rising up and everything, I kept thinking, hey, where are the guards at during all this time? Right. Then I thought about, okay. Well, there was some like medical people behind the glass. So then I'm like, oh, that's going to help with his justification. Look, they see he's doing this, right? So then the, at the end, they were like, oh, no, nah, he was still charged for manslaughter. I was like, wait, what? They saw I, what happened. They saw he was possessed. I <laughs> thought that was so funny. They, they had that triumphant music and he's over there standing like, all right, we were about to announce your sentencing and it just stops. Yeah, this, this, this motherfucker went to jail. Right. So then I was like, wait, what was the whole point of this? So then I was like, so wait, this wasn't a true story. So then I, I looked it up and I'm like, it's loosely based on a true story. I mean, the not even the plot, the beginning of the situation, basically the guy killing somebody being possessed. But I'm like, after that, it's kind of they took their own liberties with it. Ed and Lorraine Warren, they were real people. Real oh, wait, wait, hold on. They're real people. Mm-hmm. So is like so you said they was in the conjuring one and two right and annabelle one uh one of the annabelle's yeah. okay so is it they are real people in real life or the conjuring the conjuring two is it kind of like this one where they base it on real life or certain stuff they did yes oh uh, okay okay yeah so you know there's liberties yeah they took a lot of liberties on this one um so when i first started so i watched this movie at home on hbo max and so when i hit play and you know you have like all the little symbols and of the different companies that made the movie i'm sitting there i'm like man i miss the theater like i miss seeing previews of other horror movies before this like i saw Mm -hmm. the other two conjuring movies in the theater and i just miss that just saying like oh man that scary movie look fun i'll be back in july (laughs) <laughs> so that was like my first thought so i don't <laughs> already i'm coming in here thinking like man i wish i could see some tr- some trailers of other movies as this movie is starting but <laughs> right but um no i enjoyed the movie but it wasn't what i thought it was gonna be like if i i, I may have seen a trailer like last year before the world crumbled or whatever but if the title of the movie is The Conjuring, The Devil Made Me Do It, 
and I get you know the beginnings of the movie where it's like okay this person like uh, uh, uh exorcism went wrong and somebody got loose and they killed somebody and this person's on trial I thought this movie was going to be in the courtroom mm-hmm. that's what I thought too and I kind of wish that was the movie like you still have all this crap but you just frame it around the courtroom so they're on the stand and then we have flashbacks to like them investigating right i can't say if that would have helped the movie but that would at least describe the title and basically what you set up for this movie to be and also now i'm thinking about this was there a reason why did they start out with the boy and then give it to the other guy because. Like like solely, what was that purpose? Instead of just starting the movie with whatever way it got into the boy, to, to the man, or the person who did it. I forget how old he was. I feel like it was... But normally when they do stuff like that, it's some kind of playback to it or something like that. Maybe right. later on the little boy saves him, but he plays no other role in this situation. <laughs> so why, just eliminate that part and just start with the, the guy getting it and then go from there. I feel like the whole movie was a misdirect because usually like in the previous movies and in anything like this it's just randomly a demon gets attached to you but this demon is possessing this person against the demon's will it's like this was like a man-made possession you know that was the big twist of the movie and the misdirect of we thought we excised this demon out this little boy let's all go home and high five but actually it just jumped ship i feel like no, that was- the uh ed knew that but ed he can't, saw him go but he can't and- tell anybody until it was too well, late because he was in a coma or whatever right. he was going through it right 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 so that's what i'm saying like the whole misdirect i feel like that was just their creative license but no I, it was fine like i haven't seen the other two movies in years but i know that those are better movies like if i were to rank the conjure movies this would be the third one out of the three okay. like this is the weakest of the three all right then i'm about to check out the other two because i'm like no bueno like i remember loving the first one like i saw it in the theater and i tried not to be that guy that talks in the theater but like i wasn't even realizing i was talking to the screen and i was talking you. to the screen look at you yes 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 yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um i was embarrassed man but yeah the second one was a lot of fun too because they leave america they go to like a um london and they investigate some stuff over there and it was kind of cool um but yeah is it the first the first conjuring do they explain like is it them at the beginning of their journey or is it like they've already been doing this for years type yeah that okay i hate when they're like hmm you have psychic powers i have a bible why don't we go and uh, <laughs> but they'll, cor- <laughs> they'll Corella in it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but no, like they're already married. They're already established. This is just another mission for them. And it's, it's really, it's, it's, it's uh, so the first two Conjure movies were directed by James Wan who brought us Saw. Mm-hmm. It had a good little twist on it. Like it really, like, you know how you're watching horror movies and you're like, okay, just leave the house. It's a haunted house. Just leave the house, get out. It gives a very good explanation as to why these people cannot leave this house. The whole point is they need to get rid of the demon. Also, like, it's that mystery element of it, too, which they had traces of it here. It was very good and similar to the second movie. So I would recommend those over this one. And another thing I was thinking about the movie was it was in the 80s set, right? Mm -hmm. 70s or 80s? 81. Why they act like they didn't have uh, lights in their house during that time? There was nighttime. They only got like one lamp here and one lamp there, like it's a candle. It's like this is the '80s. Like you act like they ain't got no uh, ceiling light or something like that. It was like always dark. I know it's a scary movie, but I'm like, what do we do it? You have other lighting in your house. <laughs> the atmosphere. But I have a question to you. Why was she doing this? Because. I couldn't understand that. Why was evil lady doing this? Like, what was she trying to gain? Did they say that? No, because uh, the ex priests were saying that he she dove too much into the cult stuff, the satanic stuff. They named three things that had to happen. Right. I got, and I got that. But what do you get once you achieve all that? 
Oh, no, I don't remember that part. That's why I'm like, okay, okay. Why are we doing this? Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Just tell me, why are we doing this? Right. Uh, They never addressed that. (laughs) All right. What would you rate this movie, Matt? Garbage. Is there, I mean, fired. Not only am I firing her, this movie, I'm I'm pressing charges. <laughs> I'm doing whatever I can. To Security whatever is walking you yes, out of this. Yeah, you don't even get your stuff in a box. We keeping this shit now. <laughs> we, you getting walked out right now and handcuffs. That's how I feel about this movie. Yeah, um, I don't feel that angry about it. Like I'm not gonna fire you, but you definitely like are on probation. Like you can't do your job by yourself. Like somebody needs to be watching oh you. <laughs> <laughs> that's how i feel i got yeah this is not this wasn't yeah i was like Whew. yeah all right so, so not when it wasn't because it, it was just like the like you said storyline problems or excuse me i guess plot problems mm-hmm. like it was just it was just wasn't good throughout the whole don't get me wrong there was bits and pieces that were like okay this is entertaining right. but as a whole i'm like this is not good and it's not it's not even when a movie's bad you know it keeps you entertained or somewhat because it's a movie and you're like i'm gonna figure maybe it gets better at the end type of thing mm-hmm. to where this one was like i'm treating it like homework i have to do this for the podcast <laughs> so let me finish this up <laughs> <laughs> All right, we're going to hit up some Rotten Tomatoes. When it's just you and me, we will not be doing a trivia question. Conjuring 1, it got an 86% on Rotten Tomatoes. Conjuring 2 got an 80%. With that being said, what do you think the Conjuring 3 got on Rotten Tomatoes? Going off what you said, um, since you've seen the other ones, then I'd probably say it's lower than that, but probably still high. I don't know, maybe like a 70? 61. Okay. Yeah. And granted, at the time of this recording, the movie has been officially released like to the public for one day. So as time goes on, that number will get lower. Which it should. <laughs> All right. So this was a short one this week since it's just Matt and myself. Since next week is Father's Day and we're both fathers, we're taking the week off but we'll be back with something special the week after. Thank you so much for listening. Please rate and review our podcast on your platform or choice. If you have any feedback, please email us at weusetotalkpod at gmail.com. Like our Facebook page, we used to talk about this at work and follow us on Twitter and Instagram at weusetotalkpod. And that's the way the news goes. Short to the point, baby. Sometimes that's all you need. Short to the point.